Hello and a very good morning from Stockholm and welcome to my first video from the lovely Scandinavian country of Sweden. You join me as I'm just catching the metro to Stockholm Central Station. Today we'll be travelling with the national carrier SJ aboard one of their flagship Schnabtug X2000 trains through to Gothenburg in first class. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. The metro, along with the city's network of trams, is probably the best way of getting around Stockholm. However, be aware that tickets are a bit on the pricey side, with a one-way ticket setting you back 50 kroner. That's about £4.20, $5.50 or €4.90, although I guess that's to be somewhat expected given that Sweden isn't exactly renowned for being the cheapest place in the world. Anyway, Stockholm Central Station is served by Metro Lines 10 to 14 and 17 through 19. I've just come outside to have a quick gander at the facade before we take a look around the inside. I must say I'm loving that they've decorated it a bit for Christmas. Stockholm Central Station originally opened back in July of 1871 and is Sweden's busiest railway station, serving just over 39 million passengers per year prior to the pandemic. The lovely Christmassy theme continues on the inside. As we enter, there are staff ticket counters just to my left. <laughs> Through here is the station's main hall. I'm loving how spacious it feels and the mood lighting on the ceiling is a very nice touch in my opinion. Large departure boards can be found towards the middle of the concourse, with information being displayed in both Swedish and English. The station is also home to a very good selection of shops and restaurants. You should have no trouble finding something you like to pick up before starting your journey, should you wish to do so. As we're travelling in first class today, we'll have access to the SJ Lounge. If for some reason you can't see the big sign indicating where the lounge is, You'll find it located above McDonald's. Thank you. The lounge has complimentary tea, coffee and juice on offer, as well as light snacks. It's also possible to purchase alcohol and fizzy drinks. In my opinion, this is one of the better railway lounges I've come across and is a very pleasant place to wait for your train. The time eventually comes to leave the lounge and head down to the platform and await the arrival of our train. We'll be departing from platform 13 this morning. The service we'll be taking is the 11.30 to Gothenburg Central Station, train number 431. Just one more thing before we head to the platform, on the level below the main concourse you'll find luggage lockers. Prices start at 39 krona per hour or 199 krona for 24 hours. On the opposite platform, we can see the Vigruppen sleeper from Narvik in the Arctic Circle and Lulia. I'll be covering the Narvik portion of this train in a future video. Anyway, our train arrives fresh from the depot, on time. As I mentioned earlier, 
The ride across to Gothenburg will be aboard one of SJ's flagship X2000 sets. 44 of these trains were built between 1989 and 1999, with today's service being formed of a power car and six passenger coaches. The X2000s have a top speed of 200 km an hour or 124 miles per hour in service. In order to negate the need for the train to slow down when rounding curves, these trains have a tilt function, just like on Pendolinos. First class is located in coach 1, which is at the front of the train in this instance. Seating is laid out in a 2 plus 1 configuration, consisting almost exclusively of airline style seats. When booking, it's possible to choose your seat for the seating plan, and I've selected seat 36 today. We depart Stockholm Central Station, bang on time, at 11.30. As we depart, let's just take a quick look at our route for today. Our journey will see us travelling southwest from Stockholm, via the likes of Katrinholm and Huebde, before arriving into Gothenburg. Scheduled journey time today is 3 hours and 5 minutes, and our top speed will be 200 km an hour. As you can probably tell by the fact the Bay of Oshtaviken below us is pretty much frozen, the weather outside is both literally and metaphorically Baltic. Temperatures in Stockholm on the day I filmed this were around minus 15 degrees Celsius. We're soon picking up speed as we make our way out of central Stockholm. Now that we're underway, I think it's time for a seat tour. In my opinion, legroom is pretty good. Here you'll find a seat back pocket which contains a magazine. Each airline style seat features a large, sturdy and adjustable tray table. You'll also find a coat hook on the back of the seat in front. Between the seats, you'll find a pair of plug sockets and I'm pleased to report that these worked just fine. Under the seat, you'll find a lever that allows you to recline it a little. And to the left, you'll find controls for the train's audio entertainment system. Although I didn't have a pair of wired headphones on me, so I have no idea whether or not it's still in use. You'll find a reading light in the panel above your head. Plastic bags are provided to dispose of any litter you may accumulate throughout the trip. As for the seats themselves, well, I found them to be nicely padded and well shaped, with winged headrests providing somewhere to lean your head. Lastly, you'll also find a sun visor, which rounds off what in my opinion is a very good, albeit somewhat dated, hard product. The majority of the trip is spent travelling at top speed. I found the ride quality of these trains to be okay. They were a bit rattly and bumpy, but not to the extent where it impeded on the level of comfort. A 
About an hour after departing Stockholm, we arrive at our first calling point, Katrinholm Central Station. Katrinholm is an urban area, or Tadort as it's called in Swedish, and is home to around 24,000 people. Right, time for a wonder. In coach 2, you'll find the second class quiet area. This is also the only second class coach to have a 2 plus 1 seating configuration, so needless to say, the seats in this coach usually sell out quite fast. The overhead racks on this train are fairly small, due to the train having tapered edges. That said, there's plenty of space for storing luggage on larger racks at either end of the saloon. In Coach 4, you'll find the Bistro, where drinks, snacks and light meals are available for purchase. All things considered, I found the prices to not be too extortionate. It's also possible to order meals in advance, and I'll leave a link to the pre-order menu in the description below. This is what the rest of Second Class looks like. The seats are basically just smaller versions of the ones found in First Class, and still look pretty comfortable in my opinion. In coach 7 at the rear of the train, you'll find spaces for wheelchair users, as well as a large, accessible toilet. Speaking of toilets, these can be found at the ends of most coaches. And I was pleased to find that these were generally nice and clean, well stocked, and in good working order. At the end of the first class saloon, you'll find complimentary tea, coffee, water and fruit. There were also chocolates available, but needless to say that these were scoffed in no time at all. One last thing, this train is Wi-Fi enabled. And as train Wi-Fi goes, the speed is pretty good. I believe this train is also fitted with some sort of device that repeats cellular signal, so connection to mobile networks is also very good. Our next and final intermediate stop is Huebde. While the city dates back to the medieval ages, much of central Huebde was destroyed in a fire in the year 1759, and as a result, very few buildings predating this remain. From here, we'll run non-stop for the remaining hour or so to Gothenburg. As we approach Gothenburg, let's just take a moment to reflect on our journey. Overall, I was really quite impressed with what was on offer here. The seats were rather comfortable and, while dated, still provided everything that one might need. It's also worth noting that SJ are currently in the process of refurbishing their X2000 trains, which should bring them up to modern standards. One last thing I'd like to add is that I thought the crew were amazing. They were very friendly and cheerful throughout the entire journey. The only thing left for us to divulge over now is the price. I paid 585 kroner for my one-way ticket today. 
Considering that this is Sweden, I don't think that's bad at all. For reference, second class on this service would have cost 445 krona, so I thought it was well worthwhile paying the extra for the lounge access, better seat and the light refreshments. So overall, a pleasant journey aboard the SJX2000, but what did you make of it? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Now all that's left for me to do is to welcome you to Sweden's oldest railway station, Gothenburg Central, where we arrive around 5 minutes early at half past 2. With that, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to help us out by giving the video a like. If you're new to the channel, then you're going to want to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on Monday!